Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. Today we're going to talk about three different tolerancing. Um, I love to hit zero tolerance, obviously, but what we're going to talk about is the three levels of tolerancing that we work with here in the shop. One is the part print from the customer. The second one is your working tolerance. And the third one is your fit to tolerance, where you got to have something absolutely perfect. And there's a method to the madness in, as to how we achieve that. And we're going to try to explain those tolerancing in a little more detail um, in this episode. Here is a print, a part print that I talked about as our first tolerancing. And typically you'll have plus or minus tolerances um, for specific dimensions. And most people are familiar with this, and this is what we all started off learning. So I just want to talk about this because it's it's the most common and um, if it's well done and well designed and this is this particular part is part of an assembly then once you make these parts within all the tolerances that are on the print then those parts and components will fit together okay and now that we've looked at a part print tolerance we're going to go into an example of the next part, which is my working tolerance, that in the shop, that's what we work work towards. So I have a, a, a one inch pin. It is a plus zero minus four thousandths um, diameter. And I don't want to shoot for the zero and I don't want to shoot for the four. I want to land in the middle. And, and in order to do that, I'm going to shoot for a smaller percentage of uh, the error that I'm allowed. So I'm going to go to two thousandths which would be a negative two thousandths um, number, and then I'll give myself an even smaller tolerance. Let's say a plus or minus, let's go a half thousandths. So we're gonna go that small, so that I have a window that I'm, at, I'm gonna operate. I'm gonna shoot for a super tight tolerance, and if I miss it a little bit, I'm still within the larger tolerance. So this is what I consider my, my working tolerance. Um, as we build molds and, and do details in our shop, that's the second tolerancing that I'm talking about. This us to our third tolerance that we work to, and that is fit or shut off tolerance. And our goal is to take our insert here that has got a drafted angle, let's say it's two degrees per side, and we want it to fit in this pocket that also has two degrees. We want it to shut off water tight. Our goal is to make it exactly tight so nothing can get through there, especially in injection molds. We don't want plastic going where it's not supposed to go. So in order to do that, a lot of the times you could cut zero, zero on both sides um, and shoot for that, like I talked about that working tolerance where you actually shoot right for the number, but you could, you could have cutter wear, you could end up with more stock on one side or the cutter was bigger than you measured it um, before you put it in the machine and then it ends up being the other way where it's removed too much stock. So for practical purposes we would like to leave a little bit of stock in there just for the very last piece of fitting so if if my insert is mounted let's say I have it in a 3R a sunspot holder I could make the cut on this insert and then final cut it and put it back in here and take it in and out just to make sure that it actually fits correctly so that's the idea of the fit and shut off you can also do an interference fit where you make it have a press. So I'll make sure that these are interfering so when the mold closes it actually pushes and it actually makes an imprint for shut off when it's necessary. Um, and this particular shut off condition that we have on this insert that's going to be hand loaded into this mold, we are looking to get a, just a perfect zero tolerance type of fit. So in order to do that, I really can't have material missing. So in this particular area, we left maybe um, a half a thousandth per side of this material. And then we're gonna put this block in here, or our insert, and we're gonna see how far it goes down. It should stand up just a tiny bit, which you can see there's, it, it might be 20 thousandths high, which we can do some trigonometry and figure out exactly what that is. But I wanna put it in there just to get an idea of what it looks like on my shutoff with blue. You can kind of see a witness of some blue on these areas. Uh, and that's a cut surface. 
and then we'll make our electrode, we'll actually drop our electrode in there and tickle out that, that last half thou to a thou and a half total so that we'll be able to get this to drop in all the way and not have any gaps um, for flash, for the plastic to squeeze through. I, all I want to I explain one last thing here with the fit. This is going to be an interference fit. And anybody that's done like press fit dowel pins or some kind of um, alignment tool uh, will actually make the hole, we'll make this hole like minus one thousandths from what you're supposed to have it. And then we'll make our pin will actually push in and smush the material out of the way and it'll lock itself in here. Let's say this is a dowel pin and you that pin gets press fit in there and that's that kind of fit tolerance um, I'm talking about where sometimes fixtures or molds they require an interference fit where that pin you don't want that thing coming out so you're giving it a press and you actually smash um, let's say that the pin typically the dowel pins are hard into your either soft material or a softer material if it's not as hard so that's just another example of what I'm talking about when I say a press fit or uh, shut off. Here I want to show I want to show uh, what I was talking about with the pins and the accuracy. One thing about uh, EDM is wire EDM is very easy to be super accurate with. Um, we use it to do real fine, real tight tolerance inserts and ejector pins and to dowel pins like I showed on the whiteboard. So I want to show you an example of a hole that we did through this block. It's a hardened block of S7. And I've got three different size um, pins here. So here's what I want to show. This hole was designed to work with an ejector pin and have two tenths of side clearance. So four tenths of a thousandths clearance total, or a half thou roughly. So we're going to put in our bite cutter. It's, it's tight and it goes in. It's real, real, it doesn't move at all if you try to move it. It's really tight, so that's a real tight tolerance, a real tight fit. Um, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna go down to the 49, which is gonna be a lot looser. This one moves, but you can see there's actually a vacuum under there. You can see how much that moves. And it's just, it's letting air go by as it goes down. And you've probably seen videos where they show wire or EDM stuff where it, it just falls right in and blends together. I want to explain and, and show like what an ejector pin size would be because in, in, in a mold this pins coming in and out a lot it, it has grease on it so this right here is way too tight eventually this would go up and it would seize up in the block. The ejector pin will have some clearance you can see it drop down we will put grease in there and that grease will keep that from ever wearing out. This will go in and out a million times without without any, ever wearing anything. But that's the kind of fit we're looking for. And the wire EDM is, is an ideal tool to make that tolerance happen. Okay, I have the insert. There's an insert in this block too that I wanna show you. And it, it, it's made possible through with wire, fast hole and wire in the EDM. So I'm gonna push this insert out. It has, like, like the pin, it has a couple of tenths of side tolerance or clearance. Kinda has a little bit of oil on it, but this is the insert with the shape on it and we're able to make the insert and the pocket on the wire EDM and then we actually put this shape in with the sinker um, in place while it's in the block but this is this is a great example of uh, a tight tight tolerance done uh, with the wire EDM in the sinker EDM department when we make our electrodes for shutoff areas um, we have a lot more uh, flexibility for error. Uh, obviously you're cutting, you got machine error, you got sinker error, you got trode error that, that can happen. And when you're making shutoff areas, you can cut the electrode and then physically measure it. And if it measures incorrect to what your overburn was supposed to be in a shutoff area, then you can, you can measure the the areas that are critical and you change your overburn or spark gap on the machine to make up for that that difference that you're finding on your electrodes and that'll allow you to make a, a nice dimensionally perfect shutoff area when cutting electrodes it's an advantage of using the sinker um, 
just like the wire EDM, it, it gives you a, a, it gives you more flexibility, more control than just cutting something and then if it's too far, it's it's done. You can actually physically measure it first and then burn it and see that your numbers are correct. While Mike is setting up this electrode, let's talk about the machines that we're using and our ability to trust that they're gonna do what we want them to. Sometimes machines have a float or inconsistency. That's difficult to deal with, but if there is a consistency and they're not as accurate, you can make a compensation for that, knowing the machine, having a feel for it, knowing where to make those changes and still achieve what you're after, <clears throat> you know, approaching a close to zero tolerance um, as we can get. Is zero tolerance achievable? That depends on your definition of zero tolerance. My wife's definition is different than mine, but we'll go with what mine means to us here at Zero Tolerance. If you are aiming for a number and you achieve that number, that is hitting the target. Uh, if your customers are happy with what you deliver to them, that's, that's our definition of, of uh, zero tolerance. And here's an example of an insert that I want to zoom in on and we'll, we'll take a look at what we have. This is a gate, gate insert that makes a cashew style gate so they can put the plastic right under the edge of the lip of the part where you will not see where the plastic came in on that part. This concludes our episode of Tolerancing, um, zero tolerance style, and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for next month's episode. Zero tolerance with learn to burn. <laughs> to zero tolerance. Welcome back to zero tolerance with our learn to burn episode in practical machinists. Welcome back to zero tolerance with learn to burn series with prac. I need to redo it. I, I gotta. I gotta write it down. Practical machinist. Got it. Okay, you ready?